The Model 3 manual is in the wild. Tesla will be its own customer. Model 3 has hopped the pond. Model S and Model X owners can swap batteries. And the Adelaide project is officially complete. This is Tesla Tidbits episode number 326 for November 27th, 2017. Leading off this week is the Model 3 manual finding its way into the world. The link in the description is to the Electrek story, so everyone has a fairly reliable permanent link to the manual. But a hat tip to one of my Twitter followers, at DocDave, for being the first to let me know about the manual and pointing me at it. As holidays have kept me quite busy, I have not had the time to personally read it, but Electrek does call out that the manual confirms the 75 kilowatt hour battery pack in the car. Their other callouts are really nothing we haven't already seen from the videos of folks fortunate enough to get their hands on the car. I hope to get a chance to sit down and read it in full soon, but until then, you can have at it yourselves at the link in the description. In a move that should surprise absolutely nobody, Tesla plans to use its own semis for logistics between Gigafactory 1 and Fremont. Electrek reports that Jerome Guillen, the VP of Truck Programs, was at a transport and logistics conference in the Netherlands where he said, quote, Tesla will be the first customer for the truck. We will use our own truck to carry cargo in the U.S. between our different facilities. We have an assembly facility in California, the Gigafactory in Nevada, so we'll use our trucks to carry things in between, end quote. As a few sources have noted already, the distance between the two locations is 258 miles, which almost appears to be the use case that Tesla built the long-range version of the truck for. Also considering their effort to retrofit Model X and Model S into Ranger vehicles, you have to think it's pretty high on Tesla's list to make sure its own operations are as environmentally friendly as possible, and this would go a very long way toward that end. The link gives Guillen's full presentation on this as well, so be sure to check it out to get the latest on the semi from the program's boss. Some good news for those of you overseas waiting anxiously for your Model 3. Electrek also reports that a white Model 3 has been spotted by multiple people tooling around the German Autobahn near Ingolstadt. Also of note, the car was spotted supercharging at the Brock supercharger utilizing an adapter as the car was equipped with the Tesla charge port. Multiple things can really be made of this. Firstly, that's the first known use of an adapter for Menkes Type 2 to the Tesla port per Electrek. Second, another European sighting is a good sign for progress to get cars outside of North America. While production isn't anywhere near necessary output yet, the fact that they're bothering with running the car in Europe lets us know that they plan to be ready to go when production is ready. Could European customers get a 2018 Christmas present? We'll see. Battery upgrades have been something that has been discussed nebulously in regard to Model S and Model X for some time, but now it seems we have the first hard evidence of this being a real thing. Way back when, when the P100DL was first introduced to the world, Tesla told us that folks that hadn't yet been delivered could have the upgrade for an extra 10 large, and those that already had the P90DL could do so for 20 Gs. But then we heard crickets. Until now. Tesserati tells us that the first P90DL to P100DL conversion has been ordered and has the invoice to prove it. Tech Guy, who also happens to be the guy that figured out that Tesla was limiting performance in the ludicrous cars after a certain number of launches, is the man getting it done. Interestingly enough, the upgrade will also upgrade the seats in the car to Tesla's latest next-gen seats that had the crash testing performed with the upgraded pack. Finally tonight, Teslarati tells us that the massive Australian energy project in Adelaide has been officially completed. While there was a celebration a few weeks ago, the installation was not fully completed at that time, and Elon referenced that in his speech at the event. In fact, the installation is actually not even online as of this writing, as it still must clear regulatory testing, and the South Australian government must validate that its requirements have been met. But this is expected to be complete before December 1st. The project drew the eyes of the world's energy sector when Elon put a 100-day timer on the project from signing to completion or vowing to make it free, and after signing the deal on September 29th, beat the clock with plenty of time to spare. To be fair, Tesla did sort of cheat, as they began construction of the project well before the signing of the agreement. However, the end result is that South Australia has insurance for its grid in under a year's time from the event which was the impetus for the project. Make sure you check out the links to the full stories in the show description. While you're at it, check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash Tesla Tidbits. Shout out to my newest patron, David Brandt, for his support. 
Thanks, as always, to my super patrons for supporting the show at the $10 plus level. They are John Waltower, Drew Schuyler, John Waller, Mark and Sarah Thomas, Ryan Scarborough, Lee Sweet, William Henry Crew III, Dorian Steve Guberman, Bruno Quindici, John Rich, Joey Boots, and Rolf and Cheryl Waterhouse. Be sure to show your love on YouTube, iTunes, and other services across the internet, or use the show referral code ts.la slash jon4602 if you're in the market for a new Tesla. It's good for free supercharging for the life of the vehicle. Also, be sure to check out my Extra Life donation page at bit.ly slash tt-el2017. The TT and the EL are in caps, and it does matter. Game day is coming up this Saturday, and I'm certainly well short of my goal. If you have a buck or two to spare, I and the children it goes to support would greatly appreciate it. That's it for today. If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits. I'll see everyone back here again tomorrow. Until then, keep it charged and hit the road.